do yourself a favor, pay attention to this because this is going to make your life much simpler. I had a student um, last semester in one of my in my composition two class who said it took her hours to do her MLA formatting. No, I don't want you to spend that much time on it. So what I want you to do is we're going to build a template and you're going to learn to do this right and then you're going to save it in your locker in um, in your student resources for D2L and you will always have a clean formatted document so that you don't have to recreate the wheel every single time. You'll notice down here in the rules section these are come directly from the handbook and I'm going to walk you through point by point on how to do each of these things. The formatting says for font it should be written in 12 point text. I require Times New Roman 12. I read approximately 100 papers every time there's an assignment. Every assignment needs to be Times New Roman 12. You will lose points if it's not. Easiest way to do that is um, Control A or Command A if you're in Mac. That highlights everything in there. And then you're going to change it to Times New Roman 12 font. Now, you may need to, if you copy and paste anything in here, like stuff for your citations, you may need to do that again. But this is what it would look like in Times New Roman 12 font. So I'm going to delete that one. We've already done that. The line spacing should be double spaced. So let me show you what that looks like. Again, Command A or Control A. You can use this little button here. So this just looks like two arrows pointing away from each other, and that just means line spacing. And we're going to make that a 2-0. Now you can do it here, but what I want you to do is bring up the, the dialog box that goes for paragraph formatting. So we're in the Home tab of Microsoft Word, and if you're in the online version, it may look slightly different. You may have to look around for where these commands are. But we're going to bring up the paragraph grouping because it does more than just do the line spacing. For now, I'm going to bring up this 2.0. Um, but I also want to bring up the format, paragraph formatting. So if you're in a Windows-based computer in the Home tab, in this section right here, this is the paragraph grouping. There's a teeny tiny arrow here that will bring up the paragraph grouping. But I have a Mac, so I have to do it the hard way. But once I'm in here, it looks the same no matter which format I'm using. I'm going to line everything left. I want to make sure that right now all my indentations are at zero, so these numbers right here. And then before and after spacing is at zero. Microsoft Word defaults, it gives you extra space after. I will mark you down for extra spaces. It's just annoying when you read 100 papers that everybody's in a different format. So make sure that left, zero, 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 double spaced, OK. OK, so now we have our line spacing down. Margins, all margins should be at one inch and left justified. So Weirdly, if you have an older version of Microsoft Word for Mac, the margins do not default to one inch all the way around. So we're going to go into this Layout tab. So Home, Insert, Draw, Design, Layout. And it lets you bring down margins. And the normal margin is one inch all the way around. But do double check because if, you're, if whoever has used your computer before you has changed uh, any of the style sheets, it may impact what yours comes out looking like. So make sure this is one inch all the way around normal margins. All right, so we've done that. Oh, left justified. So if we were going to do left justified, it was in that paragraph tab again. And that goes right here. Now, when we get to the title, we will change that. In If you'll notice what I've done here is I've put in some what I call placeholder text, so that you know what goes there, and then you have to fill it in later at the at later date. So I've built in the name block, I've built in a sample header, I've built in the title, and then these sample paragraphs. What MLA is saying is that the first line of every paragraph should be indented by a half an inch. That's what this says right here. So to make that happen, you're going to highlight the body of the paper, so not your name header. This is a common error. Don't highlight this right here, just the body of your, pair of your paper. And that's why I say have that placeholder text. You may have to correct this later if you copy and paste anything. So make sure that, um, that you go back and make sure that it took the formatting. So we're going to go back to the Home tab 
And then here is where you would open up the paragraph grouping with that little arrow in a Windows uh, computer. Or here on the Mac, we're going to go into the paragraph grouping again. In the center indentation section, there's this special. And if you clicked first line and go 0.5 inches, what that's telling the computer is that every time you hit return, the body of the next paragraph should be indented half an inch. It cre essentially creates your tab for you. So notice what it did here is it moved everything in a half an inch, but just the first line. The rest of the lines are normal. So what you should see is that your name block is here, the paragraph is indented half an inch, and then the rest of the paragraph comes over here to the left. Make sure you verify this information. A lot of times I'll see this accidentally indented, so just make sure that you're double checking. So we've taken care of the indentation. Now we need to do the page numbers. All right, so the way the page numbers work is that you create a right justified header with a, a half an inch from the top edge of every paper. The header should include your last name followed by a space and the page number. Your pages should be numbered with uh, Arabic numerals. That's just basically your normal one, two, three, and should start with the number one on your title page. Most word processing programs have the ability to automatically add the correct page number to each page so you don't have to do this by hand. If you are used to using Google Docs, I guarantee this is going to mess you up. So get used to using Microsoft Word. You will be using it for the rest of your college career. To get up in the, to the header, the easiest way for me is to double click in the white space up here. And you have to get your double, um, your double spaces or your double clicks fast enough on your mouse or your trackpad so that it opens up the header. Um, and then you'll notice, let me click down here again. So it's, it, I'm at the home tab. When I go into here, it opens up this new, in, in Microsoft Word for Windows, you'll see a new ta uh, tab that says header and footer. So it will look slightly different. Let me show you how I got to the page number. So when you first click up here, it's going to be on your left. And what I wanna do here is insert page, oh, not a cover page. Oh, I am in the wrong place. See, it happens to everybody. Insert a page number, and it will look very different in a Windows computer. So insert, a, add a page number, and I'm just gonna do this right here. And Mac defaults to the one on the right. In Windows, it will be slightly different. So watch the video that is in the course content if you have a Windows-based computer. The campus computers are Windows, but I'm working for home, so I have the Mac. And then on a Mac, I'm going to double tab and type my last name, or in this case, let's just type last so you guys can see what it looks like. Now, if you have a Windows-based computer, look away. If you have a Mac, it doesn't line up your page number with the right justified. So what you have to do is grab the page number, it's in a text box and move text box and move it slightly to the right. So now it looks like this. And then you'll go ahead and change your font to Times New Roman 12. The, oops, notice that it's 11, so we're gonna make it 12. Okay, and then you can click out of there. So if that was confusing to you, watch the video for Windows computer because that's the one that's one of the major differences is how we look at headers and footers. Okay, so we've got our page numbers in there. Do not just type a number. Like if you were to type number one up here, like so let's say I just did that. Notice on the next page, it just puts the number one there because to the computer, it's just a character. You have to let it know that it's a page number so it will count the different page numbers. All right, use of italics. And we will go over this again when we have assignments that require a works cited page. But in MLA style, you italicize the titles of books, plays, or other standalone works. I can They call it, um, in MLA.org, uh, they call it containers. It just means big things, like websites, but not web pages are different. A website is a bigger thing. So these are things that contain other things. So it's books, plays, websites, anthologies. I know I'm mis missing one. Um, and those are the things that you would italicize. And then, I don't particularly care for using emphasis, but if you're going to emphasize anything, that would also go in italics. If it's a smaller thing, like a short story, an article, oh, that's where I was missing. So in italics, 
you would italicize the name of a newspaper or a journal, but then the smaller thing, like the article name or the short story name, would go in quotation marks. And so we'll go over that again, but keep that in mind that they are very different things and that the italicized in MLA, and this is different than APA, in MLA, we italicize the container or the bigger thing and we put in quotation marks the titles of articles and short stories and smaller things. In the sentence spacing, we ask for just one single space after a period before the next sentence. You're just going to have to teach yourself. If you learned typing a while ago and you were taught to double space after a period, you're going to have to train yourself to not do that. Okay, the first page is like the rest of the paper. Um, everything on your first page, even the header, should be double spaced. And then this is the information that goes in what I call the name blocks. This is not the header, but the name blocks. So you've got your first, uh, your first, in the first line, it's first name, space, last name. So just your regular first name, last name. If you are in my class and you have a preferred name, but maybe in your registration it has your full legal name, you only have to use the, your preferred name on this. I can figure out who you are. All right, the second line is your instructor's name. Don't use my first name. So it depends on the professor. Um, to me, it just makes more sense to put professor in the last name so that you're not getting confused as to this is my name, this is a professor's name. So that's the second line. The third line is the name of the class, English 121, and these dash XXX, that matters. I have five classes every semester, so I need to know which section you're in. So that's either like English 121 dash 130 dash 144, Whatever your section number in goes in that XXX. Oops. Let's delete some of this, shall we? And then the last one's the date. And notice on the date what the order that it in. It's 24 August 2020. It does not use hash marks. It does not use commas. It goes day, month, year. Um, I used to call this military um, military order because that's the way we did it in the military. It is also the way we do it in MLA. So 24 August 2020, first day of the semester, it should look like that order. The title, so after the header, um, you would include the title of your paper. It should be centered and in title case, and I'll show you what that means in a minute. It should not be bolded, underlined, or italicized, italicized unless it includes the name of the book in which the book title would be italicized. So let me show you what that looks like. Title. If you put your cursor anywhere on the line or the paragraph that you are adjusting, paragraph level commands will impact the whole paragraph for everything where your cursor is. So I don't have to highlight the title, but if it makes it easier for you to remember, certainly go ahead and highlight the title. And all you're going to do is center it. And for me, it's easiest to do it from here in this paragraph grouping. It's got left justified. The middle one is centered and then the title is the same and then when it said title title of all things so you would capitalize major words this is different than APA this is different than Chicago style which is most newspaper articles that you're gonna see you are you're going to capitalize all major words that means no conjunctions so you don't have to capitalize and but or you don't have to um, capitalize prepositions, so fanboys, um, for, and, and, or, and you can go through them on what they are, um, and then articles, so a, and, and the, do not have to be capitalized, but everything else, the first letter is capitalized in MLA. The Oxford comma um, is what we call a serial comma. There are legit arguments over the use of the Oxford comma. We'll maybe go over some of those when we talk about grammar. But really what it's saying is if you have a list of things that you're talking about, you put a comma after the last item on the list, but before the and. So in other words, the UK includes the countries of England, comma, Scotland, comma, and Wales, comma, and Northern Ireland. Ireland. So Oxford commas means that this one before the and should be a comma. And like it said in the textbook, it is a point of contention for a lot of people. Okay, now here's where things get interesting. Now we have to get to the Works Cited page. And I built in some sample citations. 
You might note that these are for the first written assignment. So this is a hint that this is how you can, where you can find that information. But the works cited page needs to be on its own page. And what often happens is students just hit enter until they get to the next page. And they're like, yep, got it. So here's what happens though. What if I delete a paragraph? Now my works cited is at the bottom of the page. I really get annoyed when I see that as a faculty member or the opposite. Let me back up this a little bit where you add a bunch more pages and now the works cited is halfway down the other side. We don't want to do either of those. So I'm going to delete all those extra spaces and put my cursor at the end of the last line of the body of the paper. So in this case, I just have a space, a placeholder called end. And I'm going to insert a page break. And this also works in Google Docs, which use insert pages page break. And what that does, it's an invisible symbol that forces the cursor to the next page. And then make sure that the words works cited are at the top of that next page and that they're all the way over to the left. We'll fix it. We're going to center it here in a minute. But make sure it's at the very top. Um, I do mark down if, you, if you're not in the right place. Uh, it should be at the top of the page, which is one inch from the top of the page. The W and the C are capitalized because they're titles. If you have a singular, you can be hyper correct and say work cited instead of work cited. And then we want this to be centered. So we would go to the home tab and we would change it to centered. Now with your citations, we'll get into MLI citation building, but they need to have a hanging indent and there is hanging indent in Google Docs. It's just harder to find. Um, if you use Google Docs, again, train yourself to use Microsoft Word. What we're going to do is go back into that paragraph grouping. And here in the special, instead of none, or instead of first line, we're going to make it a hanging indent by 0.5 inches. And I had a student one semester, it took me a long time to figure out what was going on. Somebody had changed their computer, and this was on campus because people think they're funny. Um, changing this into centimeters and 0.5 centimeters is very different than 0.5 inches, so make sure that it's correct. Click OK, and notice now this is a hanging indent. And what this does for me is it allows me to see where one citation ends and the next begins. And I can see the author first. In the case of our academic honesty policy, there is no author, so we start with the title of the article, and we will get into that uh, later in the semester. So that is the basics of how to build an MLA template. One of your first assignments is going to be able to build a work, or not a works cited page, an MLA template that has this first page and has this second page. Turn it in, and I will mark it up so that you can have a more correct final version to use for future papers when you will get marked down for incorrect, um, incorrect commands. So that's what you need to know about MLA format.